Hey everybody, Troy with Ohio Mountain Bike Trails here. For many of you that have been viewing my channel already, you know that I bought this specialized chisel about a month ago. If it's your first time on my channel, well then welcome and I hope you like and subscribe to it. So I wanted to do a little bit better of a rundown on this bike. Uh, if you haven't seen, go check out my previous video of the bike build. I did do a quick rundown of the bike on that. Uh, but I wanted to go into more depth now that I've actually had some time on it. So the reason why I bought this bike was because in Ohio winters, it does definitely get quite a bit muddier. I didn't want to ride my S-Works bike, be pounding on that all winter, get the dirt up in the suspension and have to get that rebuilt too frequently. Um, so I wanted to get a little bit of a beater bike. Um, a little bit more like a cross country lighter bike as well. You know, who knows, maybe I'll try racing some cross races on it, or hopefully I'll get a cyclocross bike. You, you never can tell. Um, so we'll start up here at the top. So this is the, uh, the handlebars, come stock with it, comes with SRAM level brakes. I've been a little bit hesitant with these level brakes. Uh, we'll see when it comes to summertime. On my previous chisel, I did have some SRAM level brakes that if you set the bike out in the sunshine, it would get too hot and then the brakes would be engaged the entire time. And it would take a few hours to leave it in the shade for them to cool off for the brakes to actually release or you would have to take the uh, wheel out and expand the pads just to get the um, brakes to release. So. We'll see how it goes. So far, I've been pleasantly surprised with them. Um, honestly, I've been liking them more than my Sh Shimano bikes on my S-Works Epic. So we'll see. Um, now you do have the 12 speed shifter up here, the SRAM NX, uh, which pairs nicely with the SRAM NX derailleur and the 12 speed NX cassette as well, obviously the chain. Um, and they do a really nice job if you excuse the mud here, um, they do a nice job of pairing that with the SRAM NX crank set as well. Working our way down, we do have stock specialized handlebars and a specialized stem. Obviously they make that stuff in house, much like the seat and seat posts, just to get the price as low as they can. Um, you know, try and cut costs a little bit rather than buying a outside manufacturer's uh, specs. Now we do have the Rock Shock fork here. This is the Judy Gold. Um, on the model below, you do have the Judy Silver. I really do miss the day that they had the Rock Shocks Reba on these. Um, the Judy Gold seems okay. Um, it does seem very, very supple. I'm just kind of not really used to it yet, I guess, is my biggest thing. Um, I'm used to a little bit more of like a firm uh, suspension that comes on the Specialized Epic with that brain. With that brain on the Epic, I know I'm kind of talking about my Epic a little bit more now, um, but with the Epic, it does have a feature called the uh, brain. So basically it's locked out until it needs to be engaged and how it engages is through an inertia valve. So maybe that's more or less what I'm feeling about the you know instant engagement on this versus my um, Epic, but even the Reba, it seemed like maybe was quite a bit better of a quality shock. I don't know. Um, I'll let you guys decide that. Now this didn't come stock. Uh, the um, bottle cage and pedals, I did install those. So I have some really old Shimano pedals here, uh, the SPDs. And then I did add on a side loading specialized cage. I really like these. It's nice to not have to get your bottle in exactly straight, especially when you're trying to concentrate on what's in front of you. You just uh, reach down and slam it in there. Uh, super easy getting it in and out. Now this bike is a medium, fits me great. I'm about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, so that's why I chose it. Up here you do have the specialized power saddle. I am used to riding their, hey, I had to check my other bike. I'm used to riding their, uh, the Specialized Phenom saddle. The power saddle is a little bit uh, wider and a little bit shorter um, front to end um, than what I'm used to on the Phenom. I was a little hesitant about that as well, um, 
I haven't had any problems. I've been really enjoying it so far. I do have a little bit wider seat bones, so that's definitely helpful, um, but we'll see how it goes. Now, you do have the uh, specialized in-house tires as well. Uh, if you watched my other video, you would know that I was also a little hesitant. It's kind of a reoccurring theme, I guess. I was a little hesitant about the tires as well. Um, previously, I had run specialized tires in the past. I had ridden uh, the ground controls, the fast tracks, which come on this bike, and the Renegade. Uh, I hadn't had very much luck with specialized tires on the rear of my bike. Now, I had only ever ridden them with hardtails, so that would probably explain it. But I've also ridden some other tires, some Maxxis tires. I like running the Recon race in the rear and the Ardent race up front, much like you will see on my S-Works. And it seems like I have to run these tires in the rear about three pounds per square inch, or PSI, higher than what I would run a Maxxis tire at. Otherwise, I will bottom these out. Now, I have had issues with this one already where I did bottom it out, and I cannot find a hole in the sidewall. There's not a hole in the tread, and there is no crimp in the bead, no hole. It doesn't seem like anything is visually wrong with this tire. Nothing on the rim tape either, nothing in the valve. And for some reason, it will not hold as much air as the front one. Now, I did work in a bike shop for many years. I'm not saying I'm the greatest mechanic in the world, but I am saying that I know a little bit more than the average consumer when it comes to tubeless, but I'm also saying I don't know everything. So if you know some reason why that tire's not holding as much air as this one, different from the things that I just listed, please let me know in the comments. One thing I will say that Specialized has improved so much in their tires is their traction. Before, in the fast track specifically, I had not had great traction. I don't know what they changed. It's not necessarily the tread of their tire that has changed. Maybe the compounds have changed. But I seem to get more traction out of these tires than their old fast tracks several years ago. Now I will say I did have a lot of luck with a ground control up front and a Renegade in the rear. It just seemed like the, the fast tracks weren't super great uh, because the tread in the middle was just as aggressive as the tread on the side, which seemed to make cornering not super stable in my opinion. I do like how on the fast track, the Renegade, even a lot of the Maxxis tires, the side wall tread is so much more aggressive than the middle of the tire tread. It seems like it makes a lot more sense and gives you a lot more handling. A few more things to point out that I really like. There are two ways to mount your bottle cage. So if you don't have quite as long arms or if your ape index isn't quite as big, you should Google what that term is. It's an actual term. I didn't just make it up. You can move your water bottle from the lower position to the upper position. Now, it, the disadvantage of doing that, obviously, is you can't have a big of water bottle there, which I like to run a 24 ounce water bottle. So uh, most water bottles you see that fit nicely into these cages are about 20 ounce. Um, you know, you can always substitute that by just adding a second bottle there on the bottle cage mounts as well. One awesome thing that they did down here is they already pre-installed this chain protector, so you're not gonna gouge out your frame here. However, the clamps that they used to hold this cable in weren't the best. They, I know they don't wanna use zip ties because it seems cheap. I've learned in my experience that zip ties are they, the best form of holding those down. They do like to add these little C-clips because they look clean, they look nice. Uh, but I was riding at Ray's and I kind of uh, fell off of a log, I guess we'll put it, and completely demolished those and I couldn't find anything to put back on there in the meantime. So I was riding with the loose cable for a few hours, you know, kind of babying it so I didn't destroy anything. Now, speaking of the cabling, what is really nice other than this exterior cable here, and then you see some exterior cable here as well, is it is all interior routing right through this down to. 
The nice part about that is, is that it's so easy. The cables actually come in through this side. You can see another hole right here for if you wanted to mount a dropper post, but it is just straight shooting. All you have to do is just point that cable down this down tube and it's gonna come right out the bottom of the down tube there. Another addition I did to the bike courtesy is Steadfast Fenders. They make great fenders, especially really wanted to have it on there for this uh, reason I bought the bike. Ohio trails are kind of muddy in the winter. I wanted something to uh, handle the mud and these fenders do an amazing job of keeping the dirt out of your suspension. This bike weighed about 23 pounds, just a little bit over. I don't remember the exact number. I wish I would have wrote it down somewhere or remembered it better. Um, now with uh, everything else I installed in, on it after market, it weighs a little bit over 24 pounds. You know, you throw a bottle cage on there, some pedals, and then, you know, a bottle of water too. So it's still an awesome, very light bike, all aluminum, new designed, a little bit slacked out geometry too.